So the promise is that your car will be able to run your home, provide backup power, and look after all those things electrically. But is it for real or is it just hype? G'day everyone, Dan and Matt here again from GI Energy. Today we're talking about vehicle to grid, vehicle to home, or V to X as it's now being called. Just trying to give you a bit of information about whether it's worthwhile you pursuing, I guess. So obviously um, we get asked about it a fair bit. Um, I think there's a lot of people online searching for it. We get asked about it in the comments a bit. Yeah. So um, we'll try and shed a bit of light to what we can. Um, I think realistically, we're not sure about some things around this. Yeah. Because I don't think anybody is. I think there's a lot of unanswered questions. So we'll, we'll do our best to, um, to explain what it means and, and whether it's worthwhile looking into. Um, and then hopefully at the end of this video, you'll be educated as much as we are. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so maybe do you want to just give us a bit of an overview to start with of what it what it what it actually is. Yeah, so vehicle to grid, vehicle to home. Most people have called it, and as you sort of summarise, V two X. I guess just it encompasses all all the different options that you have there. Vehicle to load is something else that people have talked about, where you can basically just run a couple of little things from your car. So I know a few people that have done that through a storm or through a cyclone. Yeah. But specifically for vehicle to grid and vehicle to home, what we're talking about there is bringing your car into the full ecosystem of the home so you could then come home plug in your car access energy that's stored in the car battery to power your home sell back to the grid using a blackout however that may work and obviously vice versa that would be charged to the car in a similar manner that that is now with an ac charger but within a dc version yes so yeah i guess in terms of the question there a lot of people are asking about it and, and it's it's not even probably hype now because there are test sites where this is happening yeah in different states and um yeah I've, I've not seen anything in real detail about it but i know that is occurring and ultimately where once the network providers and um distributors get across it and probably on board with it that'll be the big difference i think that might be the sort of hold up in some ways there in terms of how quickly it would be adopted because for the network provider they've then yeah got a far larger battery as part of the equation if that power was to be sold to the grid I, I guess for that sense yeah um so if you can potentially then have your car to assist with yeah your load overnight backup power um selling energy to the grid it's it's quite an in, in, interesting thing it is and yeah. um as you said yeah a lot of people are talking about it at the moment so definitely i think that's going to continue to increase in terms of the interest around it yeah just to paint a bit of a picture of exactly what that would look like if you had a, a house with solar panels on the roof and let's say you had a 30 kilowatt hour battery that's pretty reasonable size even by today's standards yeah so no car in the mix there you're obviously producing energy with your solar panels storing it in your battery using it in the home and now also with the use of vpp selling it back to the grid at different times of the day depending on when it's more beneficial yeah so for example you might have be able to dispatch 10 kilowatt hours of energy during a really peak period in the evening and sell it back to the grid at 30, 40, 50 cents, even into the dollars per kilowatt hour. <clears throat> yeah. And that's how you then get a better return on investment. Um, so a typical EV would have a smaller version, probably what are they, as low as 30 kilowatt hours or? Are they, are yeah, some, in? yeah, some can be that small. Um, much but, about 80, is it? Yeah, I mean, I think there's now a couple that are 100 kilowatt hours or, okay. or greater. Most probably hover around that sort of 60 to 80. Mine's 78 kilowatt hours. Yeah. Okay. So when you compare it to your battery size, yeah, pretty large. Pretty substantial. So yeah. now using that same example, you've got a 30 kilowatt hour battery at home, but you come home in the evening and you can then plug in your car to your house. Yeah. Um, usually you'd come home around that peak time when energy is expensive. So not only can you then... Um, use more in your house because you're not constrained by you know worrying about having to buy that grid energy at a high price but you can also sell more back to the grid the same constraints apply there though obviously you can't mm. just dispatch 70 kilowatt hours immediately yeah. there's, there's there's limitations still obviously yeah of course and that would be down to the inverter size what the network would accept as well and obviously yeah. if it's beneficial to do so so yeah as you said you're not just going to empty your car <laughs> battery in 10 minutes you might discharge yeah as you, your example before 10 kilowatt hours in that peak period yeah maybe another five in the next window and then you've got obviously the power to to utilize yourself as well so um yeah it definitely is something that, that's, that's coming so as more people buy evs this is obviously going to be more 
uh, more of an interesting topic. So not only, as you said, you can use it in all those situations, but also for backup power potentially. So yeah. if you had a power cut and you had your EV there and it was fully charged, that's a significant amount of power potentially available in the house yeah. to run things. But again, you just, just still have your bottleneck of your inverter. Yeah, so correct. regardless of the size of the battery, you still can't just turn everything on because yeah. you're likely to go over that inverter capacity. Unless, of course, you've got a large three-phase inverter. Yeah. Then you're almost endless, aren't you? If you had a 30 kilowatt three-phase inverter, you could probably have most homes would be able to have most things on. It'd be quite unusual for a house to, yeah. to peak beyond that. But I think for most people, don't have 30 kilowatt three-phase inverters. So your bottleneck is usually going to be your inverter, yeah. even if you've got a massive car battery, yeah. two car batteries, big bat, whatever you've got in your home storage. Um, the only other benefit there before I forget is that it, it can be used for load, as you said. So you can even use that um, potentially for if you're out camping yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and you've got a significant amount of things there that you want to use your car battery for, that having that bi-directional charge allows you to do that then as well. Yeah. So there's a few different things there, but I think the key is that it's, it's really not ready yet. Um, I had a quick look before doing this video and, and the list of cars that have that capability is growing, Yeah. but it's still fairly small. Um, and then obviously the different network providers in different areas in Australia, have different rules around it and are at mm. different stages of, of allowing it. As you said, there's definitely some online right now, yeah. but it's very few. And as far as I'm aware, there's no formulated process for getting that approved technically with networks. So there's a bit of catching up to do there. And then there's some concerns as well. So the big one is around the car warranty. Yeah. And I guess that's probably maybe what the car manufacturers are trying to work out as well. I think so. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I don't know heaps about car, cars or car warranties either, but ultimately, if you're, you know, I mean, you use the the, the years or the or the kilometers as, as the sort of standard warranty. If it's five years or a hundred thousand k's, maybe as a sort of standard guide for a warranty nowadays, most likely. Yeah. If you're then potentially suggesting that your car battery becomes part of the the home ecosystem, and you're then potentially cycling that battery three times a week instead of once per week, what does that do? For the car manufacturer how do they police that i suppose for you know what i mean servicing yeah a number of other things that obviously need to be yeah th thought about there i suppose from that side so that that's one thing that obviously gets brought up a fair bit is is obviously around yeah what that means <laughs> for that yeah. side and i guess to that extent a lot of evs are reasonably new still anyway like we're still in that sort of not the early adopters phase we're in that that probably next phase i would say is quite fair we're obviously making up around yeah. 15% of new cars, I believe, something like that. Okay. Um, I might have that wrong. It's one of the kinds, but... I think you're probably about, it's grown. It was yeah, a lot less, but it's, it's probably not. It's probably in that ballpark, isn't it? it it's definitely grown. Um, but yeah, it's something that we obviously get asked, and I, I guess we, we don't know the answer to that. I don't know if anyone probably does, but it's, um, no. it's certainly worth putting into the mix of what you want to do with, with your system, for sure. And that none, of the, <clears throat> none of the car manufacturers that I have either asked directly or spoken to customers that have asked directly have an answer. Yeah. So <laughs> if you ask somebody about an EV, what, what happens under these circumstances, they don't know. Yeah. So that's obviously a, the biggest concern. Yeah. Um, the other concern also is it's still quite expensive to do. Yeah. So it's not having, you need to have the correct hardware and yeah. software there to do it. You can't just use any AC charger. As you said before, it needs to be a DC charger and it needs yeah. to be bi-directional, which means that there is only one really yeah. that integrates with the battery um, and that's SIG Energy. Yeah. There's more coming, but at the moment there's a limitation with hardware and it's brand new technology, so it's expensive yeah. uh, to buy. Um, and then um, the other thing that, that I always think about with this, especially with backup power, you still want to have your own home battery storage yes. because your electric vehicle isn't always going to be there. The whole point in backup power, especially for people who want significant backup power, is that you can go about your day as normal. Yeah. If you drive out your driveway and the, car, the house shuts down every time, that's not going yeah. about as normal. So from that perspective, it can only be a supplement. Yeah. It's not the magic bullet for, I don't need a battery, I don't need solar because I've got my car. Yeah. Because you need to drive your car. I mean, that sounds ridiculous, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's, it's something that I don't think people think about. Well, you need to drive it and you need to charge it. Correct. As yeah. well. So whether you're charging it at home, so you would obviously need, uh, you know what I mean, a reasonable amount of solar to do so if you want to charge it from solar. Yeah. Or 
you're at work all day and then you've got to find a way of charging it at work to then bring it home. So obviously, yeah, as you said, you still need some portion of home storage because you've got to find a way of either charging it at home or at work. You're not going to bring home an empty car battery yeah, yeah. <laughs> or vice versa. You're not going to deplete the car battery to a certain level that you can't then drive at 6 a.m. before topping it up again. Yeah, exactly. So I, th I think there's that conundrum of that sweet spot of how that would work in terms of yeah okay 100 kilowatt hour battery just for a round number yeah you, you're probably most likely going to want to keep at least 20 kilowatt hours of that because you've got a 30k drive to work or you've got to do a school drop off or you know what i mean there's so many variables yeah. there one's going to be different aren't they? and again you don't want to have the battery run into you know what i'm like on a friday if i can't even go <laughs> can't even go and get some food or something because my oh, battery's low so yeah <laughs> i'd be um, worse than you i don't even like my phone getting to 50 percent. so <clears throat> no that's what i mean um so yeah there's obviously a few things there to, to consider and then i guess yeah how, how it works really and how it integrates i suppose with um with the with the network provider yeah and we will learn more and more about that and when we do have more information we can we can talk about it in more detail yeah so i guess the reason that we raise raise it as well is a lot of people are asking that question and you mentioned that the bi-directional dc charger sig energy make is stands alone at the moment yeah and um a lot of our advice is if they're having that product at least you know you can do it in the future i'm certain everyone else will, will have their own version because they're going to have to of course yeah um especially as this becomes more mainstream but to have that right now knowing that you can do that with your system at some point is a pretty cool feature definitely. because I'd, I'd i've gone a, I'd, i definitely don't think it's hype because it's happening yeah there's still maybe a lot a lot of teething to there and when that will, will happen as you said there's only a few cars that are approved mine isn't yeah so and i understand that mine won't be able to be like i'm not i don't believe there's a firmware update that makes it compatible it'll be the next model it'd be the next model and, and that's fine um and obviously more car manufacturers will, will get to that stage as well yeah i agree i don't think it's hype i think it's coming yeah. i just don't think it's i think it's a supplementation rather than an overall solution yeah i think it should be viewed as just part of your energy mix and and, and an ability obviously to add additional battery capacity going one way or the other yeah but i think you still need to consider having a good solar and battery setup if you want that i guess we always call it a mini power station at home <laughs> yeah. so yeah. having that full need met is, yes. is not going to be done with a car but it's definitely it's definitely coming it's definitely i think there's a few things to be worked out there with the different networks and the different cars and the warranties but that will all get ironed out over the course of probably the next two or three years i would say yeah i would um, say i'd say in five years that's a common conversation where it it's definitely happening. Yeah. Within two or three years, you'll know what's what 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 it means. Yeah. And then it will be something that's implemented in a certain amount of jobs. You know yeah. What I mean? So yeah. yeah. So just cool. keep an eye on it. Yeah, for sure. And we'll keep updating when we can. Yeah. Um, if you're thinking about batteries generally, we have a battery guide that we always put a link in in the description to the video. So click on that free resource if you'd like to download it. I'm sure you'd find that quite helpful. And um, thanks for watching. Thank you.